One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Coming to you today with the old song, Cluck Old Hen in the Key of A. I had a request to do this song. This is one of those fun songs that you can play kind of in a bluegrass style, but you can also hear it in an old time jam. Uh, Allison Krauss and Union Station obviously had a very popular version of it. So we're going to work on three versions of this song, starting with just the basic single note melody. So we're going to learn the foundation of the tune by learning it almost like how you'd play it with a pick. So just basic single note melody. And then we're going to add some basic rolls and then finally do more of like a bluegrass style solo. So we're going to keep all three of these arrangements pretty simple, right? We're not going to add a lot of fluff. We're not going to add a lot of licks. We're going to try and play that basic melody in a bluegrass style. That's what we're going to work on for this lesson. I'll break down all three solos note for note and then show you some basic backup I would do for the song. All right, enough talking. Let's jump into Cluck Old Hen in the key of A. All right, let's start breaking down this basic version of Cluck Old Hen. Remember, I've got my capo on the second fret. I've got my fifth string spiked up to A. So we're going to be thinking in the key of G, but we're going to be sounding like the key of A. If you don't have a capo, you can definitely practice it without a capo. But just know when you're playing along with me in the video, you're going to want to have your capo on and your fifth string tuned up to A. All right, let's jump into this basic melody. Okay, so it's really important that you learn the basic melody first. That's going to give you an underlying foundation for the song. It's really going to be helpful if you forget a certain section to be able to rely back to that absolute basic melody, okay? So let's take it four measures at a time. Luckily, this song is pretty short, so we actually only have to learn two four-measure segments, and then they each repeat. So if you learn th these four measures, you've already got half the, the basic melody down. Okay, so let me start by playing it. Here we go. Do that a few times. I'll do it really slow. And a little faster. So for this first section, we're going to use a combination of open strings, third frets, and first frets. So we're only going to be using the third frets and the first fret. So for all the third frets in this basic melody, I'm going to use my ring finger. For all the, the first frets, I'm going to use my index finger, my left hand, okay? So we start with the open first string, and then we're going to hit the open fifth string. And then I'm going to put my ring finger on the third fret of the first string and play a half note. So the first two are going to be quarter notes. One, two, and then the second one is, the, the third fret is going to be a half note, which gets two quarter notes. So you have, we're in four, four time, four quarter notes per measure. So we have one, two, three, four. I'll do that a few times. So how you can hear it if you're, if you're having trouble uh, counting that half note is play the third fret twice and then you can hear the timing of it. And then just take out that second pluck. But like I said, it just counted out one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we basically, for measure two, we play a very similar line. We play the open first string again open fifth string again, and then our index finger on the first fret of the second string. 
So let's put those two together. We have same counting for each measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's how we play that opening melody line. So one more time. And then a response phrase is kind of similar to measure one. We're going to go. So we do open first string, open fifth string, that third fret again on the first string, and then back to the open fifth string. And then a little backwards roll lick. So you're going to put your index finger on the first fret of the second string where we just had it, and you're going to do a backwards roll, M, I, and then your ring finger goes to the third fret of the third string and then open. So you have, let's just practice that part on its own. And that's, we're doing eighth notes. We're going one and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. It's good wrist angle practice. You can't be back too much like this. You have to be able to get all those notes to ring out. And then I take my ring finger off, right? So we have play measures three and four together. Remember, if you get this, these first uh, four measures, you've got half of the basic um, song down. So here we go. One more time. practice is getting all your notes to start by being the same volume if you can. Okay, let's play that whole top four measures. Here we go. One, two, three, four. exactly actually what we play for measures five and eight, through eight. So we actually just play that same exact melody line twice, like I said. So let's practice it a few more times, because if you get this, you've got half of the whole song down. So. basic A, that's what I call the A part. And then we have the B part, which is our little response, which is going to be pretty similar. We're going to play the open third string this time. And then the third fret on the third string with our ring finger. And that's a half note. Same timing. We're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we play a very similar line, open third string twice. And now down to the third fret on the fourth string. So let's play those two measures. We have. So that's the cluck old hen part. You basically say those words, cluck old hen. So if you're familiar, that's, that's kind of what I call the chorus part, but you could also call it the B part. And then kind of a similar ending phrase. We play open third string twice third fret on the third string, and then first fret on the second string, and then that little backwards roll we did in the A part. So measures 11 and 12, you kind of walk up the notes and then back down. So the other kind of cool thing about this song, we won't get too much into the music theory, but we're essentially playing major chords with minor sounding notes, which gives a really cool tension. You can hear we're playing kind of what would essentially be considered minor pentatonic sounding notes, but we're not playing, we're not playing minor chords, we're playing major chords with minor sounding notes on top of it, which gives a very bluegrassy 
kind of bluesy sound. So let's play that. That's the B part. So we have. And in measure 11, I do thumb, 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 index. And then a backwards roll, middle, index, thumb, thumb. So then we just repeat that same four measures, right, for the B part, right? So we have. And then you'd be right back to the top. Okay, so that's the basic melody. So now let's look at adding some roll. So again, that's kind of how you play the most basic melody. So that's kind of mimicking almost like a guitar pick or you know, like how you might play it on a mandolin, which is really good to learn the notes. But again, it doesn't really have that banjo flavor. So what we're gonna do now is fill up that melody with some roll. So let's break that down.